Hi, my name is Matt, and this is a 2000 Ford Explorer that the owner says has a low fuel efficiency issue. No check engine light, and uh, they've done the usual plugs and wires. They replaced uh, PCV valve, um, a lot of the kind of more consumable stuff. And uh, actually, they say they think the problem got worse after doing that. But again, no check engine light. So the car just got here. Um, I believe this is probably going to be a uh, sort of review on similar um, because I'm expecting we're going to see a high fuel trim on this video and hopefully by now you've seen my other videos and you're familiar with fuel trim so um, I'm going to do a little bit more on just getting to a quick diagnosis on this car without doing so much of the explaining because again I've got a lot of other videos that deal with with similar to this but let's go ahead and hook this up to the scan tool and I'm expecting there to be high fuel trim on this thing explaining a low fuel economy. It also has kind of a rough idle um, as well. So very indicative of uh, some kind of vacuum leak, I believe. Um, if that's not the case, then maybe this will get interesting, but let's go ahead and hook up to the scan tool, see what we get. So let me go ahead and connect up. Let's see, and this is um, auto ingenuity that I'm using as usual. Um, I do have a review of this uh, software, which is ideal for a home mechanic on another video. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, look for some possible check engine codes. I know that there's no check engine light, but sometimes, as you know, there might be something stored in memory. Um, let's see, we've got, um, I know it has an airbag problem. I did notice that the airbag light is on. And then some... Uh, minor body codes, but up here on the generic powertrain, I was hoping for an 0171 or something like that, and we do not have it. So my next uh, instinctive reaction, let's go ahead and check long-term fuel trim on both banks. Um, and right there, I'm, I'm very happy to see this. A high long-term fuel trim, obviously indicating that there is a um, additional fuel adjustment possibly for a vacuum leak. So again, this is all review if you've seen my other videos. Hopefully, if this is not something that is intuitive to you and you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should uh, look at my um, Secret of Engine Problem Diagnosis video and some other videos with 0171, 0172, that kind of thing. Um, let me go ahead and verify because right off the top with a high long-term fuel trim, you see it's, it's running about um, 20 and I believe that we would expect a check engine light around 24 so it's just under what you would get for a check engine light so I think this explains why we don't have a check engine light um, let me go ahead and prove that this is a vacuum leak which I would of course suspect right off the bat and the way to do that I'm going to um, see if I can reach the throttle and actually I can't there's a cover in the way here so I'll have to remove that. I'm going to go ahead and pause while I remove this cover. All right. All right, so I'm going to remove this little cover here. And then I can goose the throttle right here. Um, and what I'm going to do is goose the throttle and see if we get an improvement on the long-term fuel trim. Again, if you're familiar with uh, seeing this, if opening the throttle improves the fuel trim, then in my experience, uh, I am done. I'm going to call a vacuum leak on this car, and it all becomes a matter of finding where the vacuum leak is. Uh, if it does not improve with opening the throttle, uh, then it gets a little more interesting, but let's go ahead and see what happens. And with both banks, um, obviously I'm expecting that it would be a vacuum leak that's affecting both banks, so I wouldn't expect like a particular runner on the intake manifold, something like this. This will be something affecting both banks. Uh, it's not going to be an oxygen sensor. As a matter of fact, it would be a good idea actually for me to prove that that would be a smart thing to do so before i do anything else let's go over to the oxygen sensors let's pull up bank one sensor one and bank one i'm sorry bank two sensor one and we see we've got nice oscillations with our oxygen sensor um, replacing oxygen sensors on this vehicle is not going to do anything to help with the fuel economy so let's go back here and wow, our fuel trim is actually really high now. I'm surprised there's no check engine light. Um, maybe uh, an intermittent problem. And actually they did say it was intermittent, but let's go ahead and goose this throttle. All right, that's all I need to see. That's gonna be a vacuum leak. There's no doubt about it. And it's gonna be a vacuum leak affecting both banks. 
Yep, goes right back down to zero. This is gonna be a vacuum leak. That is, I am 100% certain of it. Let's go ahead and see if we can find it. All right, I am going to use two methods to find the vacuum leak. First of all, I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to find the vacuum leak using a smoke machine. Um, as I've mentioned before, I usually like to treat myself on every um, like maybe thousand dollars that I earn uh, on this little hobby of mine. I always try to treat myself uh, to some type of tool or technology or something that makes my life easier. And this is what I have opted to do. I bought a used um, Cornwell professional smoke machine and uh, it was not cheap, I will tell you, like uh, on the order of like 500 bucks. But um, I've used it a few times before and it works amazing. But don't worry, if you don't have a smoke machine, I'm gonna show you a great way to detect the vacuum leak if you have a scan tool and even if you don't have a scan tool. But First of all, because I'm kind of pressed for time, I just want to find this vacuum leak, but I was going to show you how this works. If you have not seen one of these before, this is really cool. All right, so the first thing you do, you hook this guy up to your battery, and then you hook it up to your compressed air supply. Then you'll see there's a green light right there, and that just means it's powered on. When you push the red button, it heats up some baby oil, actually, that's in there, and uh, starts generating smoke and the smoke's gonna come out of this hose that's attached to it. And uh, let's see if this will show up. When you give uh, a little bit of compressed air, it should blow some smoke out of there. And you can hopefully see that. Yeah, that should show up pretty well. So the idea is to hook this up um, into some component of the intake. I like to use the brake booster myself and um, we'll show you how to hook this up and this will basically pour smoke out of any leak from the induction system. Brake booster on this car is really easy to reach so that makes things really nice. But brake booster I think is the ideal location in my opinion for this little gizmo, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hook it up into the brake booster. Now, of course, one of the problems is when the system fills up with smoke, it's going to all come out through the throttle body and then out the air box. So what I'm gonna wanna do is seal up. Okay, and this is just my opinion, but I do believe it's gonna be accurate. Um, in my opinion, I think the best thing to do, make sure that you're doing some kind of block off as close after the mass airflow sensor as possible. Remember, the mass airflow sensor is where your uh, intake air is measured. So, you know, really any leaks before the mass airflow cannot cause any kind of lean condition, but any vacuum leaks after, downstream of the mass airflow sensor, Anything that is a vacuum leak after the mass airflow sensor is going to um, count as a vacuum leak. That is going to be unmetered air coming in because it's coming in after the mass airflow. So I'm always conscientious to try to block off um, as much as I can of the system as close to the mass airflow as possible. And the uh, kit even came with all of these uh, nice little um, plastic caps to uh, cap up various vacuum lines and hoses and uh, snorkels and things like that. So you wanna seal up there, so good. Now we've got our intake, uh, all our induction all sealed up and we're gonna put smoke through it. A Little bit of smoke is gonna leak out around the edge of where I've blocked it off, but that's okay. We're looking for any smoke that throws out of any hoses that have holes in them or any um, disconnected uh, vacuum lines or anything like that. So uh, let me go ahead and I'm gonna Turn it on here, a little button here. Let's see if the red light shows. Yep, see there's a red light on there. That means smoke is going through. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my dial up here. There is a little meter here and I uh, usually like to set it just about five. All right, so there is a little check ball that you'll see moves up and down. You can maybe see that. And if that check ball actually drops, um, all the way to zero, then uh, you actually kind of don't need the smoke. If it drops to zero, it means the system's sealed. So actually just the fact that I can add smoke through the system and uh, the check ball doesn't move from being buried up at the top, uh, right up there, it's way up at the top there. Um, that means that uh, most likely I do have some smoke exiting uh, the engine somewhere. So let's go ahead and see if we can find it. Okay, I'm hoping this will show up on camera. 
but uh, we've got a bunch of smoke coming from the back of the engine and I don't like that. I wish it was in a little better location, but um, remember this is going to be some type of leak that's affecting both cylinders. Um, there's a bunch of vacuum lines that run back there, PCV valve, things like that. Remember the PCV valve was replaced, so there's a good chance that there could be um, a vacuum line that was accidentally disconnected, even maybe the PCV valve it itself uh, or the hose. So uh, let's go back here and take a closer look. All right, I've turned the smoke down so that it's just to a trickle and that helps to narrow down exactly to pinpoint where the smoke is coming from. What we're looking at there is the PCV valve. And it looks, let's see here, sorry for getting in the way. Um, yeah, so the thing is, it's really loose in its hose is what the problem is. Um, it is uh, not, it, the PCV valve is actually a little bit too small for the hose, so they must have replaced it with the wrong PCV valve. But that is uh, going to be what the issue is, I believe. So let me show you another way that you would be able to find this vacuum leak um, if you didn't have the smoke machine. And uh, we're going to do it using the scan tool. All right, here's the old school way of doing this. And there's actually a couple ways. I'm going to do it using the scan tool. But even if you don't have a scan tool, prior to getting the smoke machine, this is how I always used to try to find vacuum leaks other than listening for them, which uh, this one, to be honest with you, I actually can hear it. But it's easier now that I know where it is. I know where to listen. The idea is I'll also know where to add this propane. If you add propane to an area where there's a vacuum leak, when the engine draws in the propane, you're going to usually hear an idle change. But the important thing is that it's going to reduce the fuel trim. Remember, if we add fuel into the system, the computer is going to react by reducing the fuel trim. It's going to call for less fuel. And that would be confirmation that you found the area of your vacuum leak. So let's go ahead and do that now that we know from the smoke machine exactly where it's at. It saves a whole lot of hunting around with your propane um, looking for a reaction on the fuel trim on your scan tool. So let's go see how this works. My apologies, I pulled a bonehead move and forgot to attach my microphone for this part, but uh, this sound sucks, I know, but it only lasts like 30 seconds. But what I'm doing is adding propane directly to that suspect area where the smoke was coming out from around the PCV valve. We see in the green and orange down there at the bottom of the graph, the short-term fuel trim is responding immediately because the propane is making the oxygen sensors detect rich and therefore the computer is calling for less fuel from the injectors. Notice also the long-term fuel trim up at the top there in red and blue is starting to respond to that low short-term fuel trim by also coming down. And you can't hear it, but the engine idle also changed dramatically uh, with the introduction of the propane. So all of this adds up to the fact that the propane found our vacuum leak. Okay, so what we're doing now is we've got our new PCV valve in place there. So what we should start seeing is a decrease in the fuel trims. And we can see we are. Our, our short-term fuel trims here are starting to go down, which I really like. And this is evidence that we have a repair now because that vacuum leak is now sealed. So the default where it had to add fuel to compensate for the vacuum leak is now gone. All right, so I've been running this for a few minutes now, and we can see we're continuing with the adjustment. Short-term fuel trims are still negative, um, and the long-term fuel trims up above are both still slightly positive, but notice that they're both below 10 now. So when you average out the uh, short terms between minus five and minus 10, and the long terms between minus five and minus 10, eventually, uh, given enough time, this is gonna neutralize out to zero for the long-term fuel trims. So this is a fix, and uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful.